Okay, of course they are leaf blowing outside and so you will have the pleasure of hearing that in the background. Let's look at some fabric choices for this disappearing four patch. It's not a nine patch, not a disappearing nine patch, it's a disappearing four patch. Technically I'm supposed to only use two fabrics, but I have a tendency to not do stuff the way it's supposed to be done. And I like these colors. I think this is interesting. It's, um, you know, pulling on the, the blue and the green from this fabric. So these two are coordinated actually also with this. And this I had, which matches that darker color so nicely. So... We're going to try putting all four of these together and see if any of it disappears or if it just ends up being some kind of hideous mess. Okay, but we'll probably get to see that uh, as we move along. And if it looks like it's going to be really awful, then I can adjust accordingly. Okay, so for this, we have to cut a bunch of strips from our fabric. And those strips come in the following sizes. Um, five and a half, four and a half, three and a half, two and a half, and one and a half. And I'll put that up on the screen. So it's five, four, three, two, one. Uh, right, five <laughs> strips. Not the best counter in the world. Five strips, five, four, three, two, and one and a half each because don't forget your seam allowances. Oh, I forgot my little wristband. Hang on a minute. Let me see this, yeah. This is my magnetic wristband that holds my pins. And I've actually never tried to wear it with my watch before. That's probably not gonna work, actually. Let's take that off. And just slaps on like those uh, wristbands we had in the 90s. Okay, so I'm gonna take the pins out. Let's figure out how to cut fabric. Hmm. Okay, so also if any of you are interested, um, I've got a video on how I make these little miniature bolts. I didn't invent this. These are. Um, this is fabric rolled onto um, comic board cards. I like comic board cardboard pieces you get on Amazon. So I'll link that. Makes it really nice. It's it, it sort of keeps them held upright and organized and doesn't cost a whole lot of money. All right, so first of all, we probably need to try and iron some of our fabric. Let's get it, get this moved over here. Not ready for you yet. My little clapper I got also on Amazon. I love this thing. It definitely does keep the seams flatter. It's quite heavy. It's a lot heavier than you would think it would be. And, um, you know, has these grooves that are carved into the sides to make it easier to hold, but really nice. I actually wish it was kind of bigger than this, but you could have two, which I probably need. All right, so I need to iron this to get it a little bit straighter. It's not going to be perfectly ironed by any means, but I'm using my new little um, cordless Panasonic iron. Yes, I say iron, because one time I was watching a tutorial video from uh, made by a lady in Scotland, and she was wonderful, but she said iron and not iron. And I had never, ever in my life heard anybody pronounce iron as iron. And I thought that was fantastic. So now it is iron. And I like to see the look on people's faces. Pull this. I like to see the look on people's faces when I say iron, because it's sort of irritating and makes people wonder what's wrong with me. Okay, so going at this. 
I'm going to need to iron a lot of this. Of course, I'm using my um, wool mat as well. One thing I noticed, learned the hard way, I iron a lot on the wool mat on top of my cutting mat. Do not use steam from any iron on your wool mat on your cutting mat. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, because I ruined one of my expensive cutting mats that way because it warped it. I had no idea, I mean, stupid. I had no idea that the steam was gonna go straight through that wool mat. It didn't seem like a problem. You know, it's heavy and pushing down, but it's still, it still, it warped it underneath and I tried every method in the world to get it fixed, try to get that buckling out, you know, heat. I even tried ironing the the mat itself, pressing it, driving the car over it, sleeping on it. Nothing worked. So it got donated to the homeless who sew their own hobo clothing or something. I don't know. I'm sure somebody's using it for something right now. Oh Lord, this is gonna take all day. I'm probably gonna edit some of this out so you don't have to witness me just ironing all day. But I do like to have at least some of this taken care of. Oh yes, they're also painting outside, which you can probably also hear. Just get some of these big wrinkles out because it can throw off your cutting alignment. And if you screw up your cutting, then the whole thing cumulatively will also get screwed up. I have an AccuQuilt cutting machine, the AccuQuilt Go Big, which I love um, because it, of course it makes these totally precise cuts but I also sometimes just like to do my strips by hand all right that's probably good enough so I'm cutting with the selvage edge I'm just gonna fold that up no it's still not perfectly straight but I don't care I'm gonna shore up this line over here on this side I hope you can see this all right, just gonna line that up, make sure it's not terribly folded and wrinkled underneath, and get a nice clean edge on this side here. Try to get that lined up properly, all the way down, that's good enough. Put my big ruler on. Get this lined up along here. I'm using my 60 millimeter Alpha rotary cutter. I like them big. All right. So, yeah, close enough. Cut that off, throw away. It was five and a half, four and a half, three and a half, two and a half, and one and a half. So one, two, three, four, five and a half. Let's see how much I can get out of this. Five and a half, four and a half. One, two, three, four, and there's my half. This goes quite easily, quickly if you've got it set up straight. The first step so and I like to just lay these on top of each other sort of centered um, so they stay in a group but don't take up too much space I do have this nice big cutting table but I don't have unlimited space here what was that for one two three and a half Two, and there's my half. And one and a half. L 
lovely. Oh, of course I didn't get that right. Not so lovely. Come on now, don't fight me. There. All right. One, two, three, four, and five. All right. Fine. So let's move them off. And now I need my solid or whatever other color I'm going to use. I probably also use some white. Definitely going to use this because I have so much of it. Get yourself a little wristband. Hold your pins. Magnetic wristband. They're cheap. You get two. I'll link the right one because some of them, you do have to be careful with these. Some of them, the magnet is either too small or it's not strong enough. And it it sucks. It won't work. So I like pink. And this one came with a pink one and a black one. So should this one ever fall into enemy hands, I have a backup. All right. Now this is two yards and they folded it funny. So, oh, that's not so bad. All right. Got to iron again. Just enough to where the world won't come to an end. Open, open. I also sometimes like to use um, this pressing spray. This is Mary Ellen's pressing spray. I think that's her name. And I take the pressing spray out of the bottle it comes in and I put it in this lovely container, which is a continuous spray bottle that I think is more aimed at um, hairstylists that need to like have a constant spritz of hair, but it, uh, of spray, not of hair. Um, it works really well. If you keep pumping it, it just keeps spraying and it uh, gives a nice diffused mist of the pressing spray. It's not starch. I don't really use starch because there's some issues with that, but it gives a little bit of body and a little bit of strength to your fabric. Also, if you are fussy cutting or cutting binding strips, you know, anything on the bias or anything you're, you know, you might kind of be pulling around or fragile fabric, this stuff works really well to, to keep it, um, keep it a little bit stronger so it's not going to be so distorted. I have a tendency to cut stuff all over the place anyway, so... I need all the help I can get. And of course I bought the pink spray so that my bottle would be pink. And it was advertised as tea rose scented. And I thought, okay, that sounds pretty good. I like rose, I like tea, I like tea roses. But it's more like a rose covered in Old Spice or something. It's very spicy. I wouldn't probably spray it on my clothes because it would make me smell a little bit strange. I want it to smell like an old lady, which is, of course, my lifelong dream to become one. I mean, I drive a Buick and have a box of Kleenex in the back seat. I'm halfway there. Ironing, ironing. I like to iron. And I love this thing. I love the way it's pointed. It's double pointed, you see. And it has quite a nice gap there, so you can get under clothes or fabric if you need to. And it stays hot a good long while. You don't have to keep putting it on the base to keep getting it hot. And it has a reservoir you can fill with water, but I don't ever do that. I think that using steam on irons makes them not last as long. And this little bitch is expensive, so we want her to last a long time. Panasonic's a good brand. Japanese. Got a few wrinkles out and then of course I just wrinkled it again by throwing it over there but who cares. <laughs> oh little trick you probably can't see this but there is a piece of double um, sided tape on this ruler because this ruler is enormous. I love it. It's uh, one of the kind with a lip here so it grabs your mat. I put this uh, piece of double sided tape on the flat side where the other side from the lip. So I can just stick it on the wall, actually stick it on the side of a bookcase that holds 
my fabric and it's great. It just holds it there nicely in place um, so I don't have to have a hook in the wall. Oh, speaking of hooks, I have a complaint about 3M hooks and ruler holes. They do not like each other, okay? The, all the 3M hooks are either too big for the ruler hole or the ruler hole is too small for the hook. The, the one hook I found that would fit um, the hole in the ruler fit well into the, uh, onto the 3M command hook. That hook is the kind that moves, you know, it like has a little hinge on it. So I ended up having to put a piece of double-sided tape on that to make it not move because every time I pull a ruler off, it wouldn't come off. It just made the hook move. And that led to obscenities. Push, push. If you don't know how to use a rotary cutter, we can talk about that later. One, two, three, four, and there's my half. I'm just plopping that ruler back down without moving my fabric. Because I want it to be as straight as it can be. Land that on top. Keep it grouped. The less you handle fabric, the better. One, two, three and a half. That was my four and a half. Or as I say, faux. Three and a half. And I mean, if you make a mistake, who cares? Nothing's perfect. I don't like perfect. Two and a half. Perfect is boring. Trying to make things perfect will make you not ever attempt anything in the first place. Doesn't have to be perfect. When it's not perfect, that means a human being did it. One and a half. We like things made by human beings because what is anymore, you know? Nothing. Very little. Okay, all right. So I have a solid, I have a print. I could just go ahead and work with these two but I like to be weird, so I'm at least going to use my third fabric choice for this. Go away. Which is this one. These are made by the same manufacturer. They come coordinated. I actually got this fabric at Walmart. Don't, don't kill me. This is Walmart fabric. But it works. It's nice. I like it. It's pretty. It's not the highest quality in the world, but... Especially if you're trying something new or a new pattern or something, this is an excellent choice. Get some fairly cheap fabric. All right, so we're gonna do the same with this color, uh, strips of five, four, three, two, and one and a half. Again, I like to stack and group my strips so they don't interfere with my life too much until I want to use them. This is such a pretty color. Apparently this iron has an auto off feature. How not annoying at all. Well, whilst I wait for that. Um, oh, here, I can fold the stuff I already used and keep my workspace nice and tidy. I'll also show you how these uh, cardboard comic book card things work. So the way I like to do it is, get it in the camera frame, that would help, is I wrap it a little bit over like this, over the card, and get it, you know, a little bit tight, not super tight. And then I fold the card over and over. Helps if your fabric's straight over, you know, and just sort of keep pulling it towards me. That way I try to be left with enough on the end to then pin. And I like, I pin it sort of away. So grab on the corner, push through, grab on this corner, and push through, and then see there it'll stand up even on a bookshelf. Makes it nice. 
Okay. This thing is ready. Nice little interlude. Just to go through this a little bit. I know I'm not doing this right. But, you know, I'm in a hurry. I've got people to do here. Wow, this one's really wrinkled. I actually might have to pay attention to what I'm doing a little bit on this one. Open it up. Yikes. See, this big wrinkle crease here, that's enough to get the, your whole thing off if that doesn't get flattened out because look, it's pulling. You can spray just right on those creases and push. Now, when you are pressing your blocks, like when we go to press our seams open and stuff, we're not going to do what I'm doing now. <laughs> we, we're not going to do this back and forth motion with the iron. You're going to do more of a lift and push, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But for getting the wrinkles out, yeah, we got to do it the old-fashioned way. These wool pads really do make a difference. And all of this I'll link below. It's not expensive stuff. Even this iron, it's not as expensive as my Rowenta, Mercedes edition Rowenta, I might add, that frankly never worked quite right. I was on my second Mercedes at that time and I just wanted everything to say Mercedes on it. Look at that. It never worked quite right. And then once I started steaming with it, it just revolted against my government, so. Okay, dinner and show, right? And the way you can find if it's centered is if there's not a crease. Like if I pull it this way, you're gonna see this obvious creasing. And if I have it too far this way to the my left, it's gonna do other funny things. So to get that centered, I just sort of let it dance a little bit at the top, and then we can fix up that right side because we do want it as straight as it can be all right fit it along this bottom edge push hard it's a lot of layers of fabric okay junk go away one two three four five and a half again we're doing the same thing five and a half four and a half three and a half two and a half and one and a half we could also align this with our ruler here if we wanted to be, you know, really on the up and up. It's good enough. Just wait till you see me sew it. It goes all over the place. I talk to myself like this even when I'm not on camera or have an audience. Some would take medication for that. Two and a half. And... Uno and a hefo. And again, uh, AccuQuilt does make a really nice one and a half, two inch, three inch uh, strip cutter die. Come here, kitty cat. I'm making a video. Come on, come on in here. Come watch me make this. And that was one yard, by the way. So this is how much you'll have left over from one yard. I had two yards of this one. I always get more fabric than I need. Always. If I could get three or four yards of each, I will. All right. I don't think I'm going to do any more than this. And what I can do is pair this with this uh, and with this. And then we'll have some interesting sort of things happening here. Now, let me show you next how we will uh, pair these up and how they get sewn together. <laughs> 